there are several. I mean, they will tell you a few very quickly. Um, but there's really lots. Um, this carbon fiber, carbon fiber enclosure uh, is a huge issue. Um, it's there so that we can essentially make the device much more comfortable and much more stable so that I don't need to ship, you know, titanium sensor bars inside that take space and add weight. Um, but shipping carbon fiber, you know, that doesn't look like carbon fiber, that is this, fly, uh, it's, it's material that's fabric, right? Uh, was incredibly hard, is still incredibly hard, um, has tons of issues. Inventing the new display engine, uh, um, you know, that was a huge miracle, never exists on earth. We're like, let's bank the whole product on it, let's get started, and hopefully we'll figure out the miracle throughout, uh, you know, to the innovation in the lenses, um, to the vapor chamber in the back, to the fit system, um, and making the fit system extensible for enterprises so you can put it under a hard hat and any number of things. That's just the hardware. Is something we've been, you know, super clear about in our positioning from HoloLens 1 to HoloLens 2, um, which was one that ultimately, like, look, I have no interest in overhyping these products um, and having a bunch of people think that these things are consumer products um, and then in the process, you know, get to the trot of disillusionment when people are like, my God, um, I'm not using this instead of a PC, instead of a phone, instead of a television. Um, look, I, I'm fairly confident, as I think we've chatted before be, uh, a few times, that these devices need to become more comfortable, they need to become more immersive, and ultimately they need to have more value um, to price ratio before they become a consumer product. I said that in HoloLens 1, and then I said for HoloLens 2, what are we going to do? We're going to make it more immersive more comfortable and we're going to add more out-of-box value, which is precisely what we did with HoloLens 2. And you know what? In HoloLens 3, we're going to make it more immersive, we're going to make it more comfortable, and we're going to add even more out-of-box value. There is a threshold in the journey, in the roadmap, where there is enough immersion, enough comfort, and enough out-of-box value where I'll be happy to announce a consumer product. This is not it. I think ultimately the quest here goes back to having our AI understand people, places, and things. Uh, when you talk about eye tracking, we focus on the people part, right? And then as you understand the people, you want to understand uh, the people that are wearing this product in more and more detail, right? In higher and higher levels of immersion. Um, and you want to get as much signal um, in that conversation as possible. Let's go back to the killer experience if you're going to teleport somewhere. I want to be able to know what you're doing and have that level of understanding so I can really teleport you. Even if I just sent an avatar to the other side, a digital representation of you, which would be less stellar than really, really you, uh, I still want your facial expressions to go through it. I want to know the difference. Now I can put a camera here, uh, or I can do AI that based on the you know, crinkles of your eyes knows if you're smiling, if you're frowning, if you're yawning. Um, or any number of things like that. So think of it as another human signal uh, in our quest of fundamentally understanding people uh, in a natural and instinctual way with these products, right? That's, that's something that I am very excited about. It's very the eyes and the motion of your eyes and this area of your face. There's so much signal there for us to mine to create more immersive and more comfortable experiences that I'm very excited about it. We love haptics. Uh, we started this journey 11 years ago with input, that's Connect. It was about having sensors on the edge that observe environment to understand people, places, and things. We went from Connect input innovation to HoloLens input plus output. Holograms are a type of output innovation in the space of understanding people, places, or things. The last one, the most provocative one, is, is having now these things in my world exchange energy. Uh, you know, having zeros and ones that transact into photons actually transact in energy so I can push a hologram. It pushes me back with equal force. So I can hold a hologram and I can feel the temperature of a hologram. Um, we can call that haptic feedback. Uh, much more sophisticated than how you traditionally would think about haptic feedback, but another level of immersion of the experiences. The minute that I throw a hologram to you and you can catch it and it pushes you back, ooh, immersion just took one crank forward. The minute that I'm holding a hologram and there's temperature to it, cold, hot, lukewarm. 
uh, it changes the level of immersion and believability of the experience. Now, although that's absolutely in our dreams, um, we also do believe that humans are tool builders, right? Um, and sometimes we use our hands, sometimes we use tools, right? I would not want my doctor to operate it with me on me without tools, just with their bare hands, any more than I like to eat my food tonight without a fork and a knife. Um, I can just grab my hands and do it, but I'd much rather cut my meat with, you know, a, a fork and a knife. So from this perspective, like, look, we don't have any dogma on you cannot have something on your hands. As a matter of fact, in our virtual reality headsets, um, we have some pretty decent, um, you know, things that work with the same sensor set um, that ships on a HoloLens because that's the same sensor set that ships inside our vir virtual reality uh, headsets. Right, um, and that's you holding things in your hands, tools, uh, controllers. Um, that device is much more focused on on entertainment on PC, um, and people do enjoy having controllers in their hands. Um, that device could work here, but I don't know if you guys have seen that when it has lights. Um, and if you're trying to operate precisely over a hologram with lights right in front, in VR it works. You don't see the lights. You're just inside a virtual world. Uh, over the real world, all you see is the lights. Over the hologram, it's not that great of an experience. But you know, if we had the customer sing signal, and you know, our people in our in, in our ecosystem were like, "Man, I do want to hold precise input, a tool in my hand." It's super easy for us to go create a version of that that goes in IR. You don't see the light, and you know, um, life goes on. So it's absolutely also in our roadmap um, to think about holding things in the hand. By the way, not just holding things that we create. What if I am a person with a real physical hammer and my hand is occupied? I'm holding a coffee cup and I still want to touch my hologram. Right? So all those things should participate and we spend a lot of time thinking about them. Well, I think more and more uh, mixed reality will start uh, gaining traction in terms of enabling and empowering both people and organizations to um, achieve what they're trying to go achieve. Um, that's our mission for the company. <laughs> that's clearly where we're going to continue focusing mixed reality and we're going to continue doing it um, from this first line worker space where, where to be honest people have been neglected by technology um, for a very very long period of time. Um, I think in the next five years, to be honest with you, um, I think these things, well, five is hard. I'm not going to guess five years, to be honest with you. Um, let me say for the duration of this product, sure. um, these products um, is more in the one to two um, category. I think these will be all, uh, the successful ones will all be enterprise bound. Um, they'll be uh, enterprise bound primarily in first line worker scenarios and more so increasing over time to knowledge worker scenarios as well. Um, and I would say that this generation of products uh, is about that. So I'll give you the prediction for the next two years. Uh, um, next uh, um, two years, these are still enterprise bound.